All right, guys, we are going to get right into it. SCMN needs to win this game to go to LCQ, so it's really important for them. And uh, this game obviously already happened, but it was such a good game both ways. I think every player in it's like very good at the game, and SCMN Tribe, it's always so good. And they picked up my boy Fade on Tribe. Obviously still cheering for SCMN, um, but I'm happy to see Fade on a good team specifically. And uh, yeah, I'm going to hide my camera. <laughs> So you can see Bobby gets like a ton of value at the start and he just hard wins mid. I think it's Colette favored, but he did a really good job there. But then he just kind of walks into the loose hooper. But honestly, Tyrant did so good getting a loose hooper that fast because I don't think it's like, I think it's a 50-50 kind of lane and Tyrant's just kind of hard winning against Zar, which uh, obviously Zar is a fantastic player. So is Tyrant. Um, so it's impressive that he's doing it to Zar. But uh, yeah, you can see that it's kind of even right now. I do prefer SC Men's comp. I think Tribe's comp is just a little hard to pull off. Um, they do have Frank, but I think to play Frank well in comp is pretty hard, especially into something like this. Bobby is going to miss the Colette super, uh, but Zoo gets a really nice double hypercharge slow there. And his turrets aren't really going to stay up for too long. They have like a Colette super to take it out, like Amber Spinny Gadget, even like a Mag Slap or something. So he can just kind of use them to slow people. So if you never slow two people, it's really good. Um, but yeah, you can just see Tyrant's been getting so many loose hoopers this game. And uh, he's just done a really good job. Bobby's just going to be supering that. And if he can get value like hitting Zoo too, he just chains it back. It's really good. Bobby's played this game really well besides that one mistake at the start when he walked into it. Um, and Sans gets a really good play on Meg there. He gets them both low, and once SC Men has position like this, I think it's so hard to get out. You need to like hypercharge or like Lou Super. Uh, even in a Jesse turret, you just throw it like in a position like this when all three of them are alive. It's not staying up for long, but Faye does that perfectly, and uh, he gets the extra damage resistance from the hypercharge, and he's able to stay alive and win that interaction without hypercharging there. Uh, obviously the hypercharge super hit as well, but without hypercharge there, he definitely dies. Um, it's just the damage resistance that he got from it. Nice super from Bobby. Zoo's gonna pop his hyper. He hits a lot of shots, but it's just too late. So I do think SCMN's comp is better here. I don't think it's unwinnable. I'd probably say it's like a 60-40 for SCMN, just because I think their comp is easier to play. <laughs> Alright, game number two. And, uh... Yeah, Bobby just kind of walks into the mid. He knows he can do that. Good shots from Tyrant and Zoo, but Zara's doing a better job on his lane this time. He's not really letting Tyrant bully him. And uh, Sans just runs up and kills the Frank. And then they get the mid as well. So well played from Sans there. I feel like on Meg, you never get a lot of credit, but Sans plays Meg very well. And Fade's going to switch it up and he's going to break his walls at the start here. I think that's fine. Um, but this start is really good for SCMN. Now, Tribe's comp comes online when they have supers, though. They don't really get much value from the Jesse turret. The Lou Super gets them out of the zone, but uh, this start is much better from SCMN in my opinion. Fade is going to go ahead and kill Zar. You'll see Fade, like, he pops his hypercharge a lot of time just for the stats and, like, the movement speed. And uh, I, I like that a lot. I don't think... I think Frank Super is pretty weak, honestly. Um, they just buffed his main attack too much so that it doesn't make sense to use your Super a lot of the time in my opinion. Uh, now Fade does steal that kill from Tyrant. If I'm Lou, I am yelling to get that back, but I mean, he just full clip Sands like twice and gets it back, but usually you just want the Lou to chain supers. Bobby's going to try taking the turret out, and he does, so I think that's fine. Zara probably could have with his gadget, but in the moment, it's hard, so I don't think that's the worst play. And uh, you can see Trev did a really good job of just like getting their position back, and Lou does waste his super there. Fade will uh, super, but I think it would have just been better if he just hit him the whole time, but... It's okay, and uh, Tyrant just wasted his super, so he's not the closest, but he just full clips like Sans again, I think, and gets it off Bobby, but he just misses Bobby. And Lou, it's such like a chain brawler, like he's doing such a good job hitting his shots. Like, he's missing his supers completely. Okay, that one he hit, but, and then he'd just get another super back from like hitting the shots. So he's playing it really well, just needs to hit the supers a little bit, but <laughs> I guess it doesn't matter if you hit that many shots on it. So this game is really close right here, and uh, one thing, like, Fade's on the wrong Frank gadget. I think he probably assumed, which I think is a safe assumption, that he's going to be on push glut, but I think Bobby just kind of... It's like a mind game, right? You don't know what gadget they're going to go with star power. So you're just kind of guessing at some point. And uh, Zoo gets a nice hypercharge. 
This is so hard for them. They're all low. They needed to regen there. They really needed to regen. None of them regen, so they're all like 1 HP. Tyrant's like 1 HP, so he can't get good value off his hypercharge, and they're just kind of panicking here. Um, this is kind of... I, they did quals together, but this roster's been together for like a month, pretty much, with Fade, so... I think he fits the team really well, though. And Essieman's just gonna clean up there, but definitely looked like a little bit of... I don't want to say like shakiness, but the end was definitely rushed. I think if they saw it back, like, and they didn't regen there, like, I think it's tough. You're running out of time. It's so close, but I think they could have won that one. But it was a really well played set overall. All right, guys, we're about to get into game number two. Just looking at the draft, this is such a wild draft from STMN. They went Gale, Frank, and last pick Dynamite. Czar is so good at Dynamite. You guys will see. Some of the stuff he does this set, he is just like, every time he gets it, it it's like Hard Rock Mine, like how often do you see Dynamite? Like he just cooks on it though. Bobby literally just runs in a straight line. <laughs> uh, he's not wasting any time. Now, it's kind of hard because you need to run in a straight line, but Zara hits such a good stun there when Tyron jumps, and uh, unfortunately Bobby is not there to kill him in time. But you can see Bobby's just kind of feeding them. It's a hard game, though. He's, like, triple countered. I mean, I don't think Nita into Frank's the best, honestly. I think Frank can kill it pretty easily. Um, but the other two are pretty hard Frank counters, specifically Colette. And SMN's down so many gems, so it's, like, a really tough spot to be in. And it's hard for Sans to kind of play mid into Colette. Like, you're going to get poked out. It's hard for him to kill you, but if the Surge has levels and, like, Colette hits you twice, you're kind of dead. Um... So he's definitely, he has a tough job, um, and to be fair, like, I think Sans actually played mid very well, like, this set, considering it's not his strong suit. Like, he definitely should have regen there a few times, but it's just, he's playing it pretty well overall. It's kind of hard for him, honestly. So he did a really good super there, and uh, Bobby's going to super the hypercharge bear. He gets his hypercharge as well, and, uh, you know, it's looking very good for Tribe. Asuman definitely needs to push soon, so Bobby's going to pop his hypercharge, and uh, Zoo pops his hypercharge, and he goes for Sans, so he almost gets him. Sans lives on like 100 HP, and they get really backed up. Czar, his super did miss. Uh, I think it's a little... I mean, in the moment, he thought he had to collect super to dodge it, but they're just so backed up now, and uh, because Fade has a gem, if Fade didn't have a gem there, he could run up and die, but he got one gem. And SUMN just pulls a robbery. <laughs> they, they did not deserve to win that one, like, in all honesty. Like, they... I think Zara played good. Like, Sans has bad matches. I think he played good. Like, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't think it was Bobby's best game ever, but... They got the job done. They had a really good timing. Tribe kind of... was pr pretty split at the end, too. Tyrant was focusing the Dyna, and I guess he thought the Frank was fine, but... You know, it was uh, pretty <laughs> lucky for SDMN, in my opinion. It's not like something you plan. It's just a situation that happens, and you take advantage of it. And they did a good job at that. So, uh, yeah, they're switching their strategy up. I like this. They're doubling up this lane, and they realize that they lost, like, the early game last time. And this game, even though they both died, I think it's okay. I mean... Sans got a few gems, but it's still hard. And uh, you can see Bobby is just going to be running at the Surge. Getting hit by Colette once as Frank when you're full HP, it's like three Surge shots, right? So if they do a good job pinching Bobby, it's pretty hard for him to play the game. And uh, you can see Zar. Oh my gosh, I can't. He tried predicting the Nita sneaking up on him. He had such a good stun on Zoo. And then he just tries going for like... Uh, I don't know. He could have killed Zoo there 100%. And, uh, you know, there is, with the Frank Hypercharge, a way to dodge it, like, when you're at higher range. And he does do a good job doing that fade there. Um, but yeah, Zara definitely could have changed the game up a lot there if he just supered the Colette. But he's been doing a really good job, so... And I can see what he was going for there. And, uh, yeah, this game, you know, Tribe played pretty well. Zoo got caught that one time. But uh, they, they managed to get away with it. But besides that, I think Tribe played this like very, very well. <laughs> I'm sure Zoo was really nervous when he got stunned there. 
<laughs> but uh, yeah, luckily they got away with that one. Alright guys, in game number three, now this one I think Sans played really, really well. So he does such a good job in mid, even though he's getting hit, like he's... And Bobby's playing it slower too, I think, he's just not feeding the surge, oh never mind. Um, but you can see Sans is actually like winning the mid, so they have the need on the dynamite, they have the surge. I'm not sure why Tyre hasn't used his jump. I guess he was waiting for the Frank to go, but you can see Sans, he's up two gems. And uh, that's really good. It buys him a lot of time. And Zar against the Nita is definitely a matchup that he wants. Nita doesn't have range, so... Uh, nice super from Zoo though. He's been playing really good on Colette. And uh, Fate's kind of in a torture camp. He definitely has the toughest matchup. And uh, you can see Zara is just in their corner, doing a good job staying alive. The Klet can't finish him. Surge does, but uh, Sans trades him back. And uh, I think the main difference this game is Estimate. Like, Bobby's playing it a lot slower, right? He's not just running up and dying. He's kind of just staying there and letting Sans play mid. And Sans, once again, he's just getting... He's winning mid, even though it doesn't look like he is, like... He's winning mid, he's getting the objective, gets a really good Gale super off there. And uh, I think there, Zoo needs to try stealing their gem. Uh, but I don't know what his super really was, but yeah, it wasn't the best super. And uh, Zara hits such a good stun on Fade. He's been buying so much time for them. And uh, Sans has all 10 gems, so Bobby can just run up and die here. Dying around like 10 seconds is really good because he spun in. Uh, Zoo tries dodging the Dynabomb, but he just kind of supers back into it, and uh, yeah, really, the third game, they played it well. The first one was, I think the first one was complete luck, but everyone, like, everyone was so excited when we were watching this last night, because uh, SCMN has a very big fan base, obviously, so yeah, it was well played. Alright guys, and on this map, so Tribe is a team of four, everyone beforehand was saying like, is Livy, was going to be benched, like, all this, and a lot of the blame was going on him. I don't really think it was like, completely one person's fault why they were doing so bad, I think it's more like their drafts and how they were playing, like, the kind of Brawl Stars they wanted to play, just like, the style. So, is Livy is really good at the game, I was hoping he would do well, like, obviously I want SCMN to win, but... You know, I wanted his Libby to play good, and uh, just because, I don't, I don't know, it's not really... It just feels like pretty bad when you're getting blamed for everything, honestly. Um, but you can see SCMN's off to such a good start, and uh, Tyrant did a good call, and he's pushing up, and just trading damage back, so... But SCMN had the perfect start there, the kit got a kill, and then the mag got up. Zar does a really good job, and... Just once again, like, getting <laughs> subbed on like this in the situation must have been, like, very tough. So, uh, they're down 2-0, and, you know, you're getting a lot of pressure on you already. So, uh, you know, props to Tribe for, I mean, whoever is, like, making that call and is Livy for uh, playing well in this as well. But, uh, you can see at this point... Estuman's looking pretty good. The only thing with their comp is once they get spawn trapped and Bobby's out of invises, he like has no range. If he jumps on someone, he's gonna die. But they do manage to try to kill. I like that play a lot. And uh, Bobby gets on safe, which is really good. Um, I think he should just stay alive here in the corner or something and make one of them defend him, but. It's hard. They probably thought they could almost finish this. It's like 5k, but look how much damage Tribe can do. Like, Zar goes down. Bobby needs to jump on someone. He goes for Fade, but their safe is just, like, gone. Um, it's just gone like that. So, really close game. I wasn't, like, I, I don't hate SCMN's comp. I think it's just, like, one where you need a perfect start, and they got the perfect start, and they lost with the perfect start. So, I was, like... Pretty nervous for game two. I didn't think they would win game two, honestly. Just because I think it's really hard to fall for the same thing twice. And uh, seeing how the comp played. So Bobby does the right thing. I don't think he tried doing like a sneaky play like that at the start again. And uh, you can just see he's getting clipped pretty hard. Uh, to be fair, like 
I mean, I'm not in the room with SCMN, but they were apparently lagging, like the Wi-Fi they were on, like started lagging. Zara posted a clip of it on Twitter. Uh, so Bobby's just gonna jump on them and trade there. So obviously, like, the worst thing in a situation like this is something out of your control, like getting hit by, like, a leg spike or something like that. I don't know the extent of it. I talked with, like, uh, their manager, like, Luki, who was watching it, and he said it was pretty bad. And, uh, you know, I, I believe all these guys. I don't think they would just say that for no reason. So it's pretty unfortunate. Bobby, I don't know if he tried jumping there or if he went for, like, the kit tech where you, like, jump by them and getting, like, three hits and then you jump on them to kill. But uh, you can just see he is going to get the execute there on fade, and he's going to try going up. I think you just have to keep going up there. Um, it's pretty hard, though. Like, once all the grass is gone and SCMN has really bad, like, kind of momentum, I think their comp is a lot harder to play here. Um, and they do have a lot of damage, to be fair. And this play was really clean from them. So I think Zara actually getting hit there by Tyrant affected a lot because he can't like shoot them and they can walk up for free kind of uh so bobby is gonna get a good jump but tyrant's gonna go up on czar because he could just walk up for free and uh you know SMN, it looked like they had a good push but realistically they got 10 percent damage and tyrant just did more than that by himself so uh fade's gonna hypercharge his bear he's just gonna try staying alive holding position they have a pretty i mean I don't want to say it's like a full control comp, but you have like 8-bit with the big turret, like you're going to play around that. And Fade's just doing a good job. Like he's had, he might not look like he's doing like the most or something, but you have to like understand the matchups. And uh, like Izlibi has like the best matchups here. Tyrant's matchups are pretty good too, I'd say. I'd say. Like they're not like the best Carl, but it's not the worst either. Uh, Fade has like pretty hard matchups, I think. But uh, he's doing a good job on it, and uh, everyone on Tribe played this pretty well. The second game specifically, I think they played really clean. Um, and they are... SCMN almost gets a really big push at the end, but I think they're just too far behind. So Tribe's gonna take that set, and it's gonna be 2-1. Alright, next up we have Knockout. Now, I didn't like how this draft went. I think the gray one was fine by SCMN, but then they picked Piper into Meg and Buster. And I know Bobby's really good at Piper. I think it's just like making it hard on yourself. So uh, they went Piper, Larry. I think honestly, like a Barley would have been better for a thrower as well, just because end game and uh, Fade does a really good job. Like you can see, Fade, he's on his main now. His matchups are better. Like I mean, it's still like end game. He can just kind of carry, but before that, he has to play smart and. Uh, he knows that brother very well, so he catches uh, Sands out there, and uh, yeah, they are able to pretty much get an early kill like this. It, it's just on you to lose the round, right? So they're just going to play slow. He blocks the hook. That's worth it every single time. You get your Buster Shield so easily, and it's a great gadget down. Um, and I think Tribe, they should definitely keep the map not broken open. Uh, SCM should try breaking it, in my opinion. But uh, yeah, SCMN's comp, they need to, they hard lose the end game. So they need to kill before, or they need before the smoke comes in, or they need like really good position. And uh, you can see is Libby does have his hypercharge. Sparrow hypercharge isn't really the best. I mean, the stats are nice on it, but uh, the wall is kind of useless outside of Pice. If Bobby can ever get Tyrant out of Meg though, it's really good. And uh, the Piper Hypercharge, you're not going to get a ton of value either out of here. It's my issue with Hypercharge. On the long range roller, sometimes it's just like a stat buff. Um, that's, for, that's for another video though, I'm not going to rant about that. But uh, Fade's going to push the Gray back, so they're saying that they want to push and get position here. He's going to pop his Hypercharge, Bobby's going to jump backwards. Um, I don't think it's the worst or the best, they're trying to get position. For endgame, but they didn't really get the most out of it. Uh, it's pretty bad hypercharge from Bobby. He's gonna go for an off the screen curve. Again, all this is like really hard in real time. Zara does a really well, good play on Gray. And uh, Tyrant almost. Tyrant does a really good job there. I didn't even see that. He kind of 1v2'd and the fade cleans up. But that's why I don't really like Piper into the mag. I think it's just making it hard on yourself. Uh, I forget what the bands were, but it's just, I don't like counter picking yourself ever, ever, and I don't think Piper's even like that, that crazy on this map, so I didn't really understand it in the draft. 
But I do think it's winnable for SCMN. I think it's like probably like 65-35 for Trud. And uh, they need like some early pressure though, SCMN. And Gray can really do a good job doing that. And you kind of have to bodyguard the Sprout once uh, Zar gets his TP. You saw him just take out the Sprout last time as soon as he got it and he stayed alive for a bit too. Um, and Zar is honestly like cracked as Gray. So I think overall he's had a really good series so far. Um, but yeah, you can just see that Piper is pretty backed up, but they did get the mag out of mech. And uh, Bobby hits a really good shot with his hypercharge. So that was really well played from SCMN. I do think it's kind of, I don't want to say trolling, but I, there's no need to like, if you're tried, you just have to sit back and wait, honestly, and try keeping like your mech, try keeping like your supers for end game if you can. You can bust your shield early if you'll get it back for end game. And just try playing the matchups. So it's hard for SCMN to push. They have to kind of rely on Bobby and Zar poking them out, I think. But Bobby's hitting some good shots here. Zar gets fade really low as well. Uh, and Tyrant's doing a good job just keeping them back. Is Livy really wastes his hypercharge there? Um, it's not the end of the world. Sprout hypercharge kind of sucks. Like I said, it's just a stat buff. And maybe he just wanted it for the speed. But uh, yeah, so Fade's going to body block for Tyrant. You can just see how much he's trying to like protect his mech. And uh, Zar goes for a TP play. Really nice wall from his Livy. And Zar just TPs a little early there. Uh, he'd probably still die. But um, I don't know if the end game would have been different. He TP'd into the mag when it's exploding. So kind of a misplay from Zar there. I think Sans definitely would have got the mag out of mech by himself. But again, all this is like really hard in the moment. So this round, I think Zara's out of hooks. It looks pretty hard. He gets his TP back, which is good. And that wall being broken for Sans. Do you see how there's the tree by Fade? The tree stump? Uh, Sans can just stand there. I guess Sprout can bounce to the wall, but having that wall broken if you're a thrower is really nice. So they're gonna Sprout wall, Bobby off, he has to back off. I think that's, yeah, his Livy's out of gadget, so he can't even pick it up. <clears throat> He's gonna pop his Hyper. I think that's too early, in my opinion. But they are trying to get, like, control. Um, so he's probably trying to just get his Super back before the end game, And he did get it, so maybe it was worth it. I do think you can get it without your Hypercharge, and you save your Hypercharge for the end. Because the smoke's gonna come in. Like, nobody's dying here early, I don't think. Um, it's gonna be an end game one. Bobby gets a good curve. I like that a lot. The curve and the hypercharge. Uh, unfortunately, they can't keep the mag low. And Zara does a really good job. He gets a sprout. And then it's just Fade against Bobby and Sans. Fade's full HP. Really good patience from Fade. And he just manages to stay alive. 274. The smoke helped out a lot. That's what I mean. I think Tribe's end game is just a lot easier. Like, well played to Fade. But uh, I don't really like the SCMN comp that much. Alright guys, game number five. Now if you look at the players, is Livy is gonna sit out. I think how Tribe practice was like just certain players play certain modes and uh honestly like a lot of teams would have just been like, is Livy's like playing good, like keep him in. Like we won two games with him, we lost two games with Zoo. I'm not saying it's Zooland's fault, just like I think that's the thought process for a lot of teams, but Tribe trusted Zoo enough to bring him back in. And they're like, you know what, you scrim these modes, like we trust you here. And uh, yeah, so they brought Zulan back in, and I don't really like SC Men's comp again. I think it's pretty hard, but really good Buster Shield from Fade there, as we can see. And uh, yeah, Tribe. I don't think SC Men's in the worst spot though, honestly. Like Bobby, he is able to get a kill. I do think Tribe's comp is better though. I think SC Men's comp is really hard. Um, they don't really have a lot of HP outside of Primo, so I think Amber and Rico kind of serve like a similar purpose. They're like scouting, like they have good damage and stuff, but it's not like a Gale or something, like a real anti-tank in my opinion. Um, and Fade on his comfort pick, his Brawler, Buster, 
Um, and you can see they get a good kill there as well, but it's just really hard. And Fate gets such a good shield there. He shields the Amber gadget. I wasn't sure what gadget Amber was on after that, but after seeing that, he was on the Spinny gadget, which he should be on here. And uh, Fade's just been doing such a really good job, man. So I'm happy for him. Obviously, <laughs> I want his two men to win, but uh, I'm I'm uh, happy he's playing good, and uh, we're having a good match to watch. So Bobby does get his hypercharge there, but you can see like SU men, they haven't really been able to go over uh, the halfway mark really. I think Bobby got over there maybe once, but besides that, it's like Sans and Zar just kind of poking Mask's range. Uh, I don't really like their draft once again. I think it's just hard to play compared to Tribe. Even though Tribe has like something off meta, like a squeak, like they have Gale Buster, so I think he kind of compensates for it a bit. And uh, yeah, you can see Bobby's gonna go in. Now he just leaves Zoo alive. I definitely think you need to finish that kill there. Uh, I'm not saying it would have changed a lot, but I think you'd be in their spawn with another Primo jump, but you don't know what's happening on the other side of things. So, and again, like, Zar posted a clip on Twitter uh, on this map specifically, and he did have, like, pretty bad delay. I don't know if it was for the whole game, if it was just spikes, but it looked pretty bad. So uh, that's also something to keep in mind as well. But Tribe is one game away from reverse sweeping STMN. Uh, they're like ending their pro season chances if they do reverse sweep them. Um, so yeah, it was a lot on the line here. I think SMN the past three games have been outdrafted, in my opinion. Um, their comps have definitely been harder to play, at least. But uh, if anyone can do it, they can. So let's see. If they can pull something off here. So yeah, Sans gonna just Rico super there. Primo, I just don't like it because you're so useless at the start of the game. And uh, you just can't hit anyone. Like, it looks so unfun to play Primo into this. You just have to run at them, but Fade gets a really good Buster super. Zara tries his best, uh, but you know, Fade's just been playing very good on this brawler. And uh, I think everyone on Tribe's been playing pretty well overall. They've been doing the jobs. So, uh, yeah, good drafts from Tribe as well the past few games. Even the gem game, I think they had comp, honestly. But, uh, yeah, they are going to finally get Sans and Zar over that halfway line. But they have Gale Super, so Zar just went a little too far forward. And Squeak's going to get Sans as well, too. So... It just, it took them like two games almost to get up to the like halfway point. And Bobby's gonna go in here. He does get his super back. And uh, that's gonna let Cesar push up a bit, but it's 3v2, so he, at the same time he has to back off. Fade is gonna go down here actually, so good burn from Cesar. And Sans has his hypercharge. Bobby's just gonna walk up and die again. It's, Tough playing Primo to Gale. Zara is doing really good on the Amber though, honestly. He's kind of keeping them in the game at this point. And he is going to get slowed. Fade's just going to hold position here. And, uh... Yeah, Fade's going to be one. But this is actually, like, really good positioning from SUN. Sans kind of wastes his hypercharge. Bobby goes in. He will get Zoo. And Tyrant's just trying to keep the ball away. Zara tries to bring the ball to him. Zar tries giving the ball to Bobby again, he goes to fade, and Bobby jumps on him, oh my god, like, 8 seconds left. I think overtime's kinda hard for them, I think the Amber has to like, carry. It is a speed Rico, but Primo's so bad in overtime. And uh, you can see fade gets his buzzer shield, unfortunately Tyrant does get his hypercharge. And they're gonna lose off that. So... So yeah guys, uh, it was very sad, honestly. I think SUMN deserves to go to like LCQ at least. Um, they just fell a little short. And uh, I think a few bad drafts. I don't think it was unwinnable, um, but it's definitely harder on them the last three-ish drafts. So unfortunately, SUMN isn't gonna be able to go to LCQ this year. I still think they're a really good team and I know if they went, they could 
I'd probably put them as favorites to get out of LCQ. I think a lot of people would. Um, it's just a little tough. They had a hard year. Um, obviously, they could have played better some games, but I, I think bracket-wise, they did have the harder time than some of the other teams. And, uh, yeah, you know, it just kind of... I don't know, it's just a little sad to see, I guess, because it's something you don't really think is going to happen. Like, you, you know these guys, they're, like, so good at the game, they put so much time in. And, uh, I don't know, just kind of... It's pretty sad to see. I think a lot of people felt the same way. A lot of people were happy, too. I feel like SUN's a team you either love or hate. Um, but, you know, I'm friends with all of them. I know how much time they put in the game, how good they are. So, it's definitely, like, very sad for me to see. Um, uh, specifically Bobby, like, I felt very bad for him. But, uh, yeah, guys, that's going to be it for today's video. And, uh, you know, just once again, congratulations to Tribe. I'm really happy for Fade. And uh, the team of four thing is really hard to do, I know, from experience. And uh, props to them for, like, just sticking to what they thought would be best. They made some really tough substitution timings. Like, is Livy coming in on match point? Uh, and then Zulin coming in on, like, double match point. So, uh, you know... It's always a good game between Tribe and SCMN, and it's nice to see Tribe bounce back at the same time because they had a really rough year for their standards. So uh, I'm sure they're going to do really good at LCQ, and uh, I'll be cheering for Tribe and LG, of course, at uh, LCQ. Hey guys, thanks for watching. Peace.